All right. So we're going to be calculating some more moments uh, based on different forces. Um, in the last section, we were pretty much limited to two dimensions. So our moment arms and our forces all lie in the same plane. Um, what we're going to have going on this time is a couple of different things. One is it's going to be more, more three-dimensional. So our force and our moment arm might lie in and not, it might be weird. All right. Anyway, you'll, you'll get the idea as we go along here. <clears throat> but the other idea is we want to be able to say, <clears throat> if I've got a particular moment, how much of that moment is in a particular direction? And the thing I need you to remember is that when we want to know how much of one vector lies in the direction of the other, we use the dot product. And specifically, we want to use a dot product um, that with a, a unity length vector. Okay, so let's suppose that I've got a certain vector, and let me call it uh, vector G. All right, and um, gee, wow, so yellow is not a great color there. Right, let's try this. Okay, I've got a certain vector G. Okay, and I want to know how much of G lies along some other direction. Maybe I'll call that uh, H. Okay, so what I want to know is G that's in the direction of H. Okay, whoops. And it's not going to be a vector. It's just going to be a magnitude. And I'm going to get that by using G dotted with a unity vector in the direction of H. Okay. I could go ahead and write it all out if I wanted to make kind of a big messy thing here. We could say that we want G dotted with H divided by the magnitude of H. Because uh, remember, that's going to be our unity vector right there. Okay. So what we'll be doing here is we're going to find the moment. And then whenever we get that moment, we're going to use our dot product to find specifically how much of that moment is in a particular direction. Okay. So let's get after it. Let me undo some stuff here. Boink. Boink. Ooh, okay. All right. Looks like I'm out of control. Okay, here we go. So look at number 13 there. It says, determine the magnitude of the moment of the force F about the X axis. Okay, so what we have to do is our direction of interest must contain a point that has the moment arm, all right? So in other words, our moment arm needs to start in the axis of interest. Okay, so here's my axis of interest. So I'm going to need a moment arm somewhere along here like this, okay? And it's another one of those things. It doesn't really matter which one I choose because they're all going to come out in the wash to be exactly the same. Okay. At least in turn. Yeah, they're, they're going to turn out to be the same. So what I want to do, since it doesn't matter wh which one I choose, I want to choose one that's really convenient. So let me get rid of those. And let's choose the origin to set up our moment arm. So that's going to be R right there. Okay. And so then what we'll do is we've got F. F is already defined for us. So F. Oops. I had a technical problem. F they give to us here already, 300 minus 200, 150. 100, 150. Now we need to define our moment arm. 
Okay, so basically we got to get from O to B. Okay, so really we're going to come up with the vector OB. I'm just going to kind of call it R here. Um, but in terms of X, OB has to come out 0.3. In terms of Y, OB has to come over 0.4. And in terms of Z, it's going down at 0.2, okay? All right, then what we wanna do is we wanna invoke our moment formulation. Oops. Just like this, okay? And I would, I, I used my calculator to do that. You can use uh, your calculator or Wolfram or something like that, whatever, whatever works for you. Anyway, once you run those numbers, what you're going to end up getting in this case is 20 minus 105 and minus 180. Okay. Now, in terms of which direction is that, uh, good luck. I would I would say okay. So we're gonna go down the x axis, and then we got to go back in the y direction, and then we got to go down z. So it's gonna be I don't know something in there like that. All right. Um, it's it's kind of crazy. Uh, maybe one way to think about it is just to try and visualize it like this. So you're gonna go out there r, and then curl that into f, and then what you're left with. Um, your thumb is your moment vector uh, there that you're going to have. Okay. Uh, all right. So we've got that. Now, the actual question, though, is the magnitude of the moment of, of the force about the x-axis. So to rephrase this, how much of m goes along the x-axis? All right. And uh, that's where all we have to do is what I was talking about earlier. So we want to talk about mx. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take our vector m. We're going to dot it in the direction of interest. And in this case, it's just the i, uh, the i vector. That's our unity vector in the direction of interest. and what that's going to do for us is it's going to pull out the X component. Okay. So let me just kind of remind you here, because it's been a little while since we've done that sort of thing. So we've got 20 minus 180. Oops. Just kidding. Minus 105 minus 180. And we're going to dot that with 100. Zero, zero. So once we execute, our dot product, the only thing that survives is the 20. All right. So the component of our moment in the direction of X just is the 20. Okay. And I mean, kind of once you do that, you can kind of go, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> okay. That, that's the 20. That's the 20. All right. So that's number 13. Now, number 14 is something similar except that they say the OA axis. Okay, so let me draw, let me get rid of, um, whoops, got rid of more than I wanted to, but that's okay. Um, we're gonna put back our moment arm. Nope, not yet, I don't wanna do that yet. Our axis of interest is this guy right here, OA. Okay, and Remember, what we need is we need our moment arm to start somewhere on that 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 uh, axis of interest. Okay, so we could start it at A, we could start it at O, um, whatever we want to do. Now we already have have it starting at O, so I could put back the same vector that we had right there. And if we do that, what we end up getting is the same answer here for our moment. 
it's just that what we want to do then is we need to dot it with a unity vector in the OA direction. So what we're going to be looking at then is we'll say something like this. We'll say M O A. And that's going to be M dotted with U O A. All right. So what I'm going to do, I want to come in here separately, figure out what U O A is. So it's not quite so messy. And uh, so we're going to put our R vector, which is 0.3. Oops, it's not R, but OA is just 0 0.4, 0 0.3. Sorry, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0. All right, so you can work that out. Forward and X, forward and Y, piece of cake. And then we're going to divide by its magnitude. So we're going to have square root 0.3 squared plus 0.4 squared plus 0 squared, just like that. Okay. Now, when you work all of that out, um, what you're going to get is 0 0.6, and 0. So there's my unity vector in the direction of my axis of interest, OA. Okay. Did you get your head around all of that? My unity vector in the direction of the axis of interest. Okay. So that's, yeah, get get that in your head. Get familiar with how these things are phrased um, and how we refer to them. Uh, then I'm going to do my dot product. So we're going to have our M, O, A. Okay. And we're going to dot that. It was a 20. Minus 105, minus 180. I'm going to dot that with 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 0. And um, what pops out of there is oops, negative 72. All right. So that's how much of the moment is along the line OA. Okay, so let's talk for just a quick second about why we might care about this sort of thing. All right, so if, you, if you look at our, our drawing there, I mean, it, it could be anything, of course, but if you take a look at our drawing there, you see it's like pipe fittings, right? It's like pipe fittings. And so if those things are just threaded together, if it's one piece threaded into another piece, then we might need to know when that force is applied, is there going to be an effort on account of the force? Will there be an effort to tighten that thing? In which case it's going to be stable. All right. So it's not going to come loose on me. Or is there going to be an effort to unscrew it? OK, which we would want to have that happen. All right. Um, and so we need to know, since the threads are in the X direction, we need to know what's the X direction of the moment at right there at the origin. OK, now it might turn out uh, in this case here. Uh, what did we get? We got 20. OK, so boom. All right. So that's bad news. So 20. The 20 there, if you do this thing with your hand, you're going to see that if the component along X is 20, then that actually is going to try to undo the threading. Okay, so that's not cool. Um, yeah. Uh, now, that, it's hard to tell that from the picture, so don't trust the picture. So your instincts might be might be wrong, but trust the algebra, trust the, the math that we've done. So if it's 20, do the your right hand rule thing uh, and convince yourself you're going to be like, oh, okay, here's this. So if it's positive, then it means it's going lefty-loosey on me. It's going to pop out of there. Okay. Now, I'm, I might be okay still because it might turn out that um, 20 Newton meters of torque is, 
is not enough to unscrew the pipe. All right. It may not be. So it might not be a big deal. But I don't know that until I do the math. Okay. Um, if I tighten that thread to, I know, 150 Newton meters of torque, if I apply 20 Newton meters, eh, it's probably not going to come undone on me. Okay. So that's, that's kind of why we might care about this sort of thing. All right. So I'm going to end this video here. Uh, we'll be looking at some more examples in the next few videos.